That's right. Welcome to the side of the ring because it's time for some ringside rumors. First up, Wrestling Observer Radio's Dave Meltzer believes that Dax Harwood's public proposal of CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite at AW All In at Wembley Stadium is a, quote, disingenuous power play to make the Elite look bad if they don't agree to work with Punk or do the match. I don't want to, I don't, okay. I don't think that it's a power play. You know how when you're hanging out with your friend over at your mom's house and it's a Friday and you want your friend to stay over so you are basically trying to like pursue you're basically trying to like sell right you're trying to sweeten the deal in front of your mom or your dad and be like it's friday i already did my homework you know what i'm saying he's already over here all you got to do is just call his parents up bada bing bada bing it's fine like it's not a power play it's not a power play i don't know why you would assume that i don't know where that came from it would it's not a power play it's it would be a power play if all he's he's got a point i agree with him he's he's making sense in the sense that it would put a lot of butts in seats to see him punk was at wembley stadium at all in with ftr versus the elite i i i don't know i that sounds like a money match to me but that's that's just me, all right? Okay. Next, according to Fightful Select, the launch of AEW's new Saturday television show might come with a, quote, softer roster split that could be used to keep certain wrestlers away from each other. Why would you do that? Why would you Why would you do that? Why would you promote that? That doesn't make any sense to me. When I heard that, that was the most annoying, because I swear that was um, in the same article when they were talking about CM Punk. That is the most annoying thing I've ever heard. That is promoting tribalism. You're promoting the fact that, hey, do you not like that guy? Well, come on over here. What? Why don't you just stay over there, talk that, talk it out with the guy or girl that you don't like, and then if you even if you don't like each other at the end of the day, you learn to be responsible and professional and mature about it. Do you know how much you would have to... What? I don't like that. Oh, that guy, he chews his food too loud. I'm going to a completely different roster now. Also, what the hell in a cell is AEW? What is, what is Rampage doing then? Is that not a separate roster? Am I just brain dead? I've never seen, unless Ruby Soho is on AEW, I mean on, on, on Dynamite, and Jade Cargill is on Dynamite, and I mean Wardlow for a time was on Dynamite too, to be fair, and I mean Ricky Starks is on Dynamite, and, I mean, I haven't really seen Hobbs or QT Marshall on Dynamite in a while. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I assumed, I assumed, at least, that Rampage was a roster split. I guess it's not. I, I would assume that Rampage is just Dynamite Part 2A. I, I don't know. I guess that's what the roster split means. Next, the site was also told that Jeff Hardy is still recovering from recent surgery. So AEW has, quote, alternate plans for him in the coming weeks that don't involve working a match. All right, so he's probably just going to be um, a, a manager to Matt Hardy because Matt Hardy's thing right now is he's trying to get out of the firm. I love that Matt Hardy is just being suckered into a, a faction that he doesn't want to be in. So that's currently what seems to be happening right now because that's how Jeff came back. And Matt Hardy was like, I don't want to be here anymore. And then they started just, just smacking him up. And uh, that's when Jeff Hardy came back, which he got a pop. He got a pop. Oh, by the way, Jeff Hardy's back. Um, so I guess, you know, everybody's kind of just like, let's go. Yeah, right. You, you got yourself together. You got your eye surgery because apparently that's what he was also doing as well. Uh, and he's all good to go now. So look, man, I, I mean, I was thinking about this yesterday, a day or two ago. And I was like, you can have the Hardys versus FDR as like the first title defense. Obviously, they're not going to win, right? But that would be a pretty decent like title defense. Jeff Hardy's back. You know, Matt Hardy can, you know, start being featured prominently on TV again. You know, it would be a really nice first challenge for FTR to overcome. That would be pretty decent. But listen, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Next, PW Insider heard the decision to change the name of King and Queen of the Ring to Knight of Champions was a, quote, creative choice that allows WWE to, quote, revive the Knight of Champions pay-per-view and, quote, bring it to an international market. Okay, but what about King of the Ring? I thought King of the Ring... Okay, but now you're leaving King of the Ring out. You're slotting it out for something else. See, I saw an article about this man, and they didn't even mention this. So I'm see ring ringside rumors. Okay, they're here. I'm here for you. Okay, I'm giving you the 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 I don't know the scoops. Bring it to an international market. I mean, sure, 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 sure. 
I would argue that you probably need to do that to, to King and Queen of the Ring, though, because, I mean, I feel like everybody's... Night of Champions was definitely a pay-per-view that was going around for, like, a long time. A long time. I remember it was in, like, 2015, 2016, you know. Um, I don't remember. Was it at 20... Was it in during the Thunderdome era? I don't remember. Um, the point is, is I feel like we featured Night of Champions a lot more than we have King and Queen of the Ring. And the last King and Queen of the Ring that we had wasn't all that good, right? I mean, do I have to remind everybody about the women's matches that totaled up to one match for the men? Like, yay, gads. Okay. Listen, I, I look, it's, it's, it's a creative choice. If it's a creative choice, fine, fine. I can't really say anything. Next, Russell Votes told Give Me Sport that WWE would, quote, be very surprised if Edge moves on to working for AEW after wrestling his last match for WWE in Toronto in August 2023. Well, I mean, would they be would they be very surprised? Would you? Would you be very surprised? He's a legend, right? I mean, after that, if he doesn't retire, if he still has the wrestling bug in him, you know, would it really be absolutely crazy if Edge went on to work with Christian and like went on some type of like tag team run or Edge went into AEW and was like on a rampage or something, was like a manager or something like that, or he did like a heel run or something like that? Is that really absolutely like off the table? Is that incredibly, you know, weird to think about? I don't think so. I think that that's, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that that's like, you know, something absolutely insane. Um, I, I literally don't have it. That's, that's not crazy. That's not a crazy concept. He's allowed to go and not go and wrestle and not wrestle wherever he wants to. I don't see what the issue is. Next, Meltzer heard that the upcoming Dark Side of the Ring episode on Marty Jannetty, quote, might be insane. Meltzer added that Marty Jannetty is completely insane. So there will probably be a lot of insanity on that episode. So I'm just I'm just now clicking that there are links to a lot of this stuff. And I'm curious to see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for those of you who don't know. <laughs> oh, man. This was like, oh, God. How long ago was this, man? This was a couple years back. This was like two or three years ago. So Marty Jannetty on Facebook goes on this whole rant about how he got like essayed i don't okay i'm putting in quotations because i don't want to like say the name oh yeah okay but i'm also putting in quotations i'll get to that so he goes on this whole like he tells this whole story about how when he's a teen when he was a teenager somebody tried to um uh uh uh, uh non-consensually have their way with him when he was young and he and he and he and he, he gay mended them <laughs> this is man and everybody was like whoa 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 what are you talking about and then like a couple days later he was like oh it was a lie it was all kayfabe for like a storyline or something and everybody was like okay you know so yeah i i could understand that yeah there's probably gonna be a lot of insanity for that so oh yeah uh, man man if that is, like, one of the most insane things, I can't wait to see what the other insane things are going to be. Finally, Meltzer clarified that Kenny Omega has not signed a contract with AEW, despite Conan's podcast remarks suggesting otherwise. Tony Khan extended Omega's existing deal until November or December 2023 to make up for the time he had missed last year due to injury. Okay, well, he doesn't really need to sign a contract now. He still has the whole rest of the year. And I'm, I'm assuming he's doing the feeling out process of, all right... You know, well, I, am I going to need more surgeries at the end of the year? You know what I'm saying? Am I going to, you know, get all busted up at the end of the year? Is my arm going to be bent backwards? You know what I'm saying? Am I going to have to put uh, 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 a peg leg onto my onto my knee? You know what I'm saying? Like, how am I going to look and feel at the end of the year? If I'm not looking and feeling 100%, maybe I'm not going to re-sign. Maybe I'm going to get the hell out of here. I don't necessarily know. He's got a full, he's got like the rest of the year. It's like at least like, what, seven or eight months? He's fine. He doesn't have to worry about it right now. It's not that big of a deal. I'm sure he's going to be fine. So, all in all, folks, I think we just have to wait and see what CM Punk is... Wow! What Kenny Omega is going to do uh, at the end of the day. What do we talk about? So... Dave Meltzer thinks that uh, Dax Harwood's public proposal is a power play. It's not. I highly doubt that it is. That really is a far-fetched idea, right, for somebody like that. I highly doubt that that is the case. I think that he's just trying to play it up, which makes a lot of sense because it definitely sounds like a really prominent storyline, right, going in. And also, it sounds like that's going to happen anyway because Mance is supposed to be coming back in June. So, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so far... It sounds like he's coming back in June. 
it sounds like there was supposed to be a meeting, right, with Chris Jericho and all that. It sounds like a lot is supposed to be happening and could potentially not be happening. Because they said the same thing they always say. It's not set in stone. Which is what I tell you. Oh, well, we don't know. Only time will tell and we'll have to wait and see. I can't see into the future. I highly doubt you can see into the future. So we just got to wait and see what happens. Uh, let's see. There's a soft roster split, which is stupid. It's stupid because of why they're doing it. It's, it, that could be, it could be, it could be used to keep wrestlers away from each other. So we can't just sit here and be like, oh, um, this is, this is what's gonna happen. But if that, if, the fact that that is, like, the loose premise is dumb. That is stupid and it doesn't make any sense. Uh, side also told, he, okay, so Jeff Hardy's still recovering from surgery. And they have alternate plans for him. Makes sense. That means that they're more than likely going to be doing um, a manager role for him, potentially, you know, until he uh, gets himself 100%. And that pretty much just means that Jeff Hardy... No, Matt Hardy is going to be finishing up his whole firm storyline. PW Insider, the decision to change the name. Okay, it was creative choice. Okay, they're changing the name from King and Queen of the Ring to Knight of Champions. It was a creative choice, and it's going to revive the Knight of Champions pay-per-view to bring it to an international market. I personally would argue that you could probably keep doing that to King and Queen of the Ring, because I feel like King and Queen of the Ring have not been getting a proper shout, and Knight of Champions has definitely been, you know, rolling around the block for quite some time now. So I feel like if anybody needs the shine and the rub and the revive, it's King and Queen of the Ring. It's a creative choice. I can't really say anything. There's not that much that I can do. Uh, Russell Wilson, so give me support. Oh, yeah. They're surprised if Edge moves on to work for AEW. I don't know why. Edge is a grown-ass man. He's allowed to choose. If Edge wanted to go to, like, MLW, he would be, you know, free to make that decision. So I don't necessarily know what the issue is with that. Melt heard that the upcoming Dark Side of the Ring episode on Marty Jannetty might be insane. Because, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't put it past Marty Jannetty to be completely insane. So, if, again, okay. I definitely, like, um gave you the abridged version of the whole story with him and like the crazy situation that he had with someone go look that up for yourself i i don't even know what it's called just look up marty Janetti. uh i don't even know man because i can't you, you know what to look up oh you know what to look up just look up marty Janetti essay because i can't i can't say it. i don't i can't say it. uh finally Meltzer clarified that Omega has not signed a new contract at AW. Conan's podcast remarks suggesting otherwise. Tony Khan extended Omega's existing deal until November or December to make up for the time he missed last year. So, again, feeling out process. Kenny's got to wait to see what happens. You know that scene in Robots where he was, what did he say? He was like, something, something, I feel like a new me. And then his arms fell off. And he was like, hey, that's new, you know? As long as, you know, Kenny's sort of waiting for that to happen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if that does happen, I assume we're going to be hearing uh, Kenny be like, come out of here, I hate this place. <laughs> you know? So... We're just going to have to wait and see until the end of the year. Folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed this episode and has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow. And always, big hugs. Big hugs all around.